Hi everyone and welcome to an another Buff Snakes devlog. I'm going to show you what we've been working on within the past couple of weeks and believe me when I say that this patch is gonna be huge. We've added an equipment system with clothing being visible on the character. We've added freezingly cold biomes alongside with a couple of new quest lines to get there, new crafting resources and a ton of new things to do. We finally added bow and arrow weapons alongside with ranged combat. You guys literally begged for this and requested this lots of times. This was overdue and we added a trusty animal companion that helps you with some useful tricks. So stay tuned while I guide you through all of this awesome new stuff. Quick reminder, please hit the subscribe button if you want to see more devlogs or content from our indie developer journey. Thanks a lot. For those who are new here, Above Snakes is a survival game we are developing in Unity 3D that is set in a fictional world inspired by the Old West. In Above Snakes, you build the world around you by placing isometric tiles next to each other. Let's start off the video by showing the new character model for our main character Ayana. Even though our old character model looked really nice, it was necessary to switch to a new one because we needed a modular character model to display equipped items properly. The old one was not created in a modular way. We also really like the low poly look of the new one. It fits the art style of the game very well. We kept the orange robe as starting gear since that is the one shown on the main art of the game. I think it is cool that players see the main art first, then start the game and immediately recognize the robe from the artwork in game. With some leather working skills, you now can make leather armor and a pair of leather boots that provide some bonuses in combat as well as better defense. To enter the new cold biomes, you will need pelt armor and pelt boots, which are crafted by upgrading the leather armor during a quest line. Pelt boots provide temporary protection against the cold, while the full armor set provides permanent protection. You can also craft a hat from polar bear fur. I think this one especially looks extremely cool. Who doesn't want to run around with a freaking bear hat? Crafting materials for that one are quite rare, but I think that is worth the effort. You can of course mix and match all of the armor pieces, like this. We created the armor pieces by buying a modular character model from the asset store. Of course, we want our game to look unique, but I think this is a great starting point. We are altering the parts that don't fit our aesthetic and we are adding more self-made parts to it to make it our own. But this asset saved us a lot of time and headaches in creating a modular 3D character and rigging it properly. Since we now have our nice modular character, we also want to replace our already existing NPC characters. We try to match their 3D models to their portraits as close as possible. I will show you some examples of the characters that we already remade. What do you think? Do they match or do they need further tweaking? Let us know in the comments down below. The next thing I want to talk about is the new playable content, which is huge. We've added cold biomes to the game, which are snow forests and frozen lakes. Both come with a bunch of different quest lines that tell the story of above snakes further. The quests to enter the cold biomes begin with a letter that your friend Cheyenne sent to you. A friendly tribe seems to have some troubles dealing with an infested wolf that is home in the colder areas. For traveling there, you will need to craft appropriate clothing first, otherwise you will die from the cold. But you will find that out by yourself rather quickly. The new biomes also offer a variety of new resources that you can use for crafting, such as iron ores, coffee beans, tea leaves and a new kind of berry. Iron is currently the highest weapon tier in the alpha version of the game. We also have finally implemented ranged combat and hunting. Our good old friend Stark, the lumberjack, will have a new quest for you. Once you inspect his hunting gear and talk to him about it, he will offer to teach you how to hunt. First things first, you will have to make a bow from a variety of resources, as well as a fletching table where you can craft it. At the fletching table you can craft different kinds of bows and also arrows. Contrary to the melee weapons, your ranged weapon always uses ammunition each time you use it. 
We have bound your melee weapon to your left mouse button and your ranged weapon to your right mouse button. In combat you can switch seamlessly between those. Controllers are of course also supported, don't worry. The final quest of this patch revolves around gaining the trust of a wolf cub that is left behind from a plagued wolf that you killed earlier, because it was causing trouble to a friendly tribe. The wolf cub now has no mother and is left alone. You can choose to befriend the little cub by gaining his trust. Achieving that is part of a quest. Let me show you the interactive in-game cutscene where you offer different kinds of food to the wolf cub to gain his trust. Spoiler alert, this is gonna be really cute. Once you gain the wolf cub's trust, he will accompany you on your journey and be your trusty companion. He can pick up loot and dig up hidden items. You can also pet him. We have made a whole video on how we created the wolf cub explaining all the features in detail. I'll link the video in the description and in the end card. Please let us know in the comments down below which of the new contents or features you are the most excited about. I hope that we were able to deliver what you wished for the game and as always we are open for suggestions. If you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and make sure to watch our making of video of the wolf companion. Thank you for watching and see you next time.